The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, forth we, beseech we beseech you, O Lord, Lord your, your grace into, into our hearts, hearts that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. son. in the beginning is now we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast we're starting something exciting god is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word by book verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story. 
we're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain, longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain I choose to heed your call I leave it up to you You who see my rise and fall So cleanse me Disturb me Shake me to my core Make me We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility 
and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain. Longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same, but in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call I'll leave it up to you You who see my rise and fall So cleanse me, disturb me Shake me to my core Make me, turn me
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Ricky Montañez. Let us begin our celebration. Come to the table, enter his presence, eat with thanksgiving and celebrate his love. Come to the table, enter his presence, Feast with thanksgiving and celebrate His love. This is the house of the Lord. The gates are open wide. Sinners and saints, strong and faint, all welcome to come inside. Come to the table. Enter his presence, feast with thanksgiving, and celebrate his love. Come to the table, enter his presence, feast with thanksgiving, and celebrate his love. Sing and celebrate his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above this so we pray your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises 
heirs to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the Liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of the prophet. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity committed. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. The sins of my youth and my frailties remember not. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus, he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and te teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, And found happiness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven 
and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to honor the God, Holy Gospel. sheep hear my voice says the Lord I know them and they follow me The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Ang Pinoy ay pasaway. Do you agree with this? I am sure every household and every community can easily identify who is pasaway among them. This pandemic has truly tested the capacity of the Filipinos to follow guidelines and comply with protocols to prevent the spread of the virus. When COVID-19 cases peaked in the country, many people attributed this to the stubbornness of the Filipinos who mischievously insists on behaving contrary to what is expected of them, almost as if purposely baiting authorities to reprimand them. It is no wonder then that considering the strict quarantine measures, we still hear of people being arrested for the simplest reasons like not wearing face masks or face shields. To the more serious offenses of going out for non-essential travel, engaging in illegal cockfighting, drinking sessions, birthday celebrations, etc. Wag kang pasaway. Don't be stubborn. Why do people persist in doing things their way, even if it is detrimental for their good 
and the good of many? Is it accurate to place blame on the Filipino public collectively for the increasing COVID cases in the country? Are Filipinos really a pasaway? One of the themes of our readings this Sunday has to do with what we all contend with all our lives, the struggle between obedience and disobedience. Both the first reading and the gospel this Sunday point out this all too human propensity to vacillate between saying yes and no to God throughout various life situations. In the selection from Ezekiel, this indecisiveness is illustrated in the change of behavior of the righteous person who sins and the sinner who repents. In the gospel, this wavering between obedience and disobedience and vice versa is best exemplified by the ways the two sons responded to their father's commands. The first son outrightly rejects what his father required of him, but afterwards repents and eventually does what was asked of him. On the other hand, the second son readily acceded to the father's requests, appearing respectful and obedient, but in truth, failed to accomplish the tasks. We are confronted with the reality that even the best of us can sometimes falter. There are circumstances when we willingly conform to certain regulations placed before us, while on other opportunities we are unwilling to do so. Countless times in the Bible, we are also presented with the ambiguity of God's people. We read about how God's people pleased him with their obedience that he deemed it fit to reward them. Recall how Abraham was commended by God, saying, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seizure. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Scripture also gives numerous accounts of the people's rebellion against God, beginning with the disobedience of Adam and Eve down through the ages to those who continue to refuse to believe in Jesus, God's anointed one. Throughout salvation history, mankind has been described as stubborn, stiff-necked, and hard-hearted. Yet, we are blessed to have a God who never wavers in his merciful love, who cares enough to set us straight until we become his dutiful sons and daughters. Are we Christians expected to be obedient to God at all times and in all circumstances of our life? Remember that we had been given the gift of free will and God does not force us into obedience. When we insist on deviating from God's ways, we are assuming we know better than him and we can do better for ourselves apart from him. Our conformity to the will of God should be born out of an understanding of the nature of our relationship with him. The fact that he is creator and we are his creatures, that he is our father, and we are his children. When we can humbly accept our place in the grand scheme of things and realize that as Father God always wants the best for his children, can we see that his ways are meant to save us from harm 
and lead us to fullness of life. Only then can obedience to God's will make perfect sense and be the obvious choice. Jesus is our model of faithful obedience to the Father. Jesus invites us by his example to have a mind and heart for others applied in the everyday commonplace experiences of our lives. Let us take a look at the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. The example of Jesus' self-emptying is what inspires this change of mind and heart in each one of us. He emptied himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Nothing was too much for Jesus who was obedient unto death. As St. Paul tells the Corinthians, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. We pointed out earlier that being obedient may prove to be extremely difficult for those of us who are programmed to be independent and self-directed individuals. It is also equally difficult to be consistent in our choice to be obedient, but we need to try our best to do so because it is the sum of our choices that develops into our propensities and eventually our character. C.S. Lewis said, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. I do agree, and I think you do agree as well. A person truly obedient to the will of God does what is good, just, and true, even if no one is watching. Sadly, most people only do what is right when authorities are watching or faced with the threat of punishment. When you are running late for a work-related Zoom meeting, do you pretend to have a prior meeting or phone call that went beyond the time you expected when actually you were just watching the latest gay drama? Do you return your grocery cart to its proper storage place or just leave it and hope that it doesn't roll and collide into the side of someone's car? When you are grocery shopping and accidentally damage merchandise, do you report it and take responsibility or pretend it didn't happen and say that's someone else's problem? For those who are, for students who are going through online learning, this is quite a challenging. Do you honestly do the assignments, projects, and exams yourself? Or do you have your parents, Yaya, or older siblings work in them for you? Bato-bato sa langit, ang matamaan ay huwag magalit. One article I read says, these are relatively small things, but it's with these simple scenarios that we lay the foundation for how we behave in the bigger things in life. And as they often say, how we do something is how we do everything. Our lives are governed by many regulations and restrictions, more so now during this pandemic. We trust that they are meant to keep order among us and to ensure everyone's safety. 
we have a responsibility to do our part and to make the right choices consistently by always seeking the common good we turn our hearts to god may we be persons of integrity patterned after our lord jesus christ who was humble and obedient to the father through him may we come to know and follow the path that leads to life amen Let us now rise and profess our faith. I, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of maker heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible, visible and, and invisible. invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and win glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord never fails and always accompanies us in our journey. Let us present our petitions to our loving Father as we pray. Father, we entrust our prayer to you. Father, we entrust our prayer to you. That the Pope the bishops and the leaders of our Christian communities may watch over the church and keep God's people ever ready for the Lord's coming. We pray. Father, Father we entrust our prayer to you. For all of us, that we may always feel protected, especially in moments of trials and difficulties, we pray. Father, Father we entrust our prayer to you. For the local, national, and international civil leaders, that they may always defend and protect the rights of seafarers and their families, we pray. Father, we entrust our prayer to you. For all those working for the people of the sea worldwide, that they may always be ready to serve and to care for the seafarers, we pray. Father, we entrust our prayer to you that those who have died at sea and all the dying of this day may be received in God's eternal embrace of peace, we pray. Father, Father we entrust our prayer to you. For all of us, that as stewards, may, may we always remember that we are all brothers and sisters, each a part of a community bound together by love and compassionate action, we pray. Father, Father we entrust our, our prayer to you. To you. Through the intercession of our Holy Mother Mary, may the world be protected from further spread of COVID-19, we pray. Father, Father we entrust our, our prayer, prayer to you. May we shun the death penalty and push for a more efficient police force and judiciary, we pray. Father, Father we entrust our, our prayer, prayer to you. May those in power not abuse the anti-terrorism law to suppress legitimate dissent and opposition. We pray. Father, we entrust our prayer to you. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, we entrust our prayer to you. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers. We entrust to your goodness what we are praying for. You know best our needs and the needs of the seafarers. 
and their families. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that these our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and heaven earth, earth are full, full of, of your, your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Yeah. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of God's faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe to everlasting life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. During communion, we shall proceed row by row. Form a line on designated communion aisles, stepping on markings on the floor to observe physical distancing. Receive Holy Communion silently by hand. Please be careful not to touch the hand of the priest or minister during communion. Please be careful in handling the sacred host, mindful of the face mask and face shield you are wearing. After communion, go back to your pew using the right and left aisles only. Sorry. 
as we pray the Arasho Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Let us pray. Please stand. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have some parish announcements. You may drop your love offerings at designated boxes after the Mass. You may also make online love offerings through GCash by scanning the QR code on screen. The QR code is also posted near our exit door and on our collection boxes. Or you may deposit to CTK PS Bank account, flash on screen. After the final blessing, you may start to line up to the exit door once the CTK hymn is played. October is the month of the Holy Rosary. Everyone is invited to our CTK Holy Rosary. Opening is on October 1, Thursday, 5 p.m. at the main church. Also live streamed via CTK Facebook at CTKP Green Meadows. October 2 to 29, Holy Rosary via Zoom with the following schedule. October 2, 1st.
payments through GCash by scanning the QR code on screen. The QR code is also posted near our exit door and on our collection boxes. Or you may deposit to CTK PS Bank account flash on screen. After the final blessing, you may start to line up to the exit door once the CTK hymn is played. October is the month of the Holy Rosary. Everyone is invited to our CTK Holy Rosary. Opening is on October 1, Thursday, 5 p.m. at the main church. Also live streamed via CTK Facebook at CTKP Green Meadows. October 2 to 29, Holy Rosary via Zoom with the following schedule. October 2, first Friday, 4.30 p.m. October 3 to 29, Monday to Saturday at 5 p.m. and Sunday at 4 p.m. Please refer to the screen for the Zoom ID. No password required. Culmination is on October 30, Friday, 5 p.m. at the main church. Also live streamed via CTK Facebook at CTKP Green Meadows. October 2 is First Friday. We shall hold our exposition of the Blessed Sacrament at 5.30 p.m. at the main church, followed by the 6 p.m. Mass. The Holy Rosary on October 1 and 30, and the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament on October 2 at the main church are open to the public. First come, first serve basis, following health protocols similar to our public masses. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining our Mass. Good evening. special gift just type in the comment box first timers and someone will connect to you and give you that specific gift and brothers and sisters before we start i want to invite you to partner with us in god's work in, in sharing his message of love and hope to as many people as possible today for, for some people maybe it's a difficult days because it's crisis and it's pandemic and perhaps in their jobs perhaps in, in their businesses so, sa health nila or sa financial sa finances ng families nila we, we need hope we need hope we need to hold on to god more and that's why i want to share with you god's powerful verse in malachi chapter 3 verse 10 let's read that on the screen or if you have a, a scripture or a bible at home bring it out let's read it together malachi chapter 3 verse 10 in our nlt version let's read bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in the, my temple if you do says the lord of heaven's armies i will open the windows of heaven for you i will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in try it put me to the test Grave, friend this is an invitation from God to bless you and your family especially in this time of crisis and it it's also an invitation to trust him more especially in difficult situations and here's the question do to whom do you trust 
to whom do you trust? Because if, if you do make that decision today to trust Him more, and here's God's promise to you and your family. And you know, in verse 10, let's read it again. I will, sabi niya, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Help me. Try it. Put me to the test. Only in this part of the Bible, in the whole Bible, where God says, test me on this. Praise God. Friend, I invite you today to trust Him. Here's the details in the screen where you can give. And please, if you give online, Kindly message us your name, your details, so that we can say thank you also, and we can record that you're giving. Thank you very much for trusting Him more and partnering with us. Let's continue. Let's worship Him today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As we come to worship the Lord, I invite you to declare God's goodness in your life. It might be difficult to do it now because of what's happening around us. But it says in Romans 8 verse 28 that all things work together for good to those who love God. This gives us the consolation that even our wrong decisions, our failures, mistakes, sickness, heartbreaks, even our struggles and difficulties, all of this will be used by our God our own good and so I encourage you my dear friends in Christ to stay put keep believing that there's a God who works behind the scene for us fighting our battles with us and for us keep trusting that this God that we worship is leading us to our victory
Hey everybody, welcome to the weekend feast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. We welcome you to the weekend feast. I want to thank the worship team for leading us in worship, for bringing us before the presence of God. Before we dive into God's word today, I want to invite you to be active in the different activities that we have online that the, the pandemic will not stop us from coming together in the spirit and uh, doing things, learning together. So I invite you first to be part of the light groups. The light group is where we do life together. This is a more intimate group and this is where discipleship actually happens. So be part of the light group today. Okay? We also invite you, your kids, to be part of the Awesome Kids Ministry. You, we have these slides and um, we, we invite your kids to also learn about what Jesus says, to learn more about this relationship that we have. We also invite you every Mondays, Monday we invite you to the Hunger Club. This is a Bible study for the Feast Makati District and of course this is led by Sister Risa Singson Kaupeng. We invite you to dive deeper into God's Word and fall in love with God's Word in, in a deeper way, promise, promise. We also invite you to the weeknight feasts. And this feast is led by Brother Jan Silan and Brother To Rilova every Tuesday and Thursday. So at 7.30 p.m., um, yes, we invite you to take part. Tell your friends there's no reason for you to miss the feast. Because if you can catch it on weekends like today, you can also catch it on weeknights. So, brothers and sisters, I hope you will join us, and I hope you can, you can, we can hold hands spiritually and learn and journey together. 
we will continue our series, our talk series on miracles and more. Today, we are going to continue. We are on the second week of our series, Miracles and More. And today, our um, theme, our message, main message for you is make me follow. Make me follow. Are you a follower of God? Are you a follower of Jesus? That's what we're going to talk about. But before that, I invite you to pray with me. Our favorite prayer here at the feast, all right? With, the hand, with your hands over your chest, I want you to say this prayer with me all together. Let's declare God's abundance over our lives. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, speak to us today. Speak to us. Have your way in us. And as we lean into your word, Lord, we pray that you speak to us in a personal way. Let your voice be so clear that we will know that you are speaking to us. Have your way in us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, I have a question for you. Have you heard God's calling in your life? Yes, the question's right. Have you heard God's calling in your life? Everyone has a call. Everyone is called. But the problem is sometimes we think that calling refers to someone who is religious, someone who is a preacher, someone who's in ministry. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that God's calling in your life can be unique just for you. And this is not just for people who serve God. God's call is for everyone. The question is, where is he calling you to? What is he calling you to do? Where is he leading you? One thing's for sure, God is calling you. Where he will bring you, where he's calling you to, that's what we will talk about today. Maybe, maybe some of you are accountants. Maybe, maybe some of you are doctors, lawyers. I want you to know that God, if you're a lawyer, maybe God's calling you to be a lawyer. Maybe God's calling you to be a doctor. We are called um, to, to, to the different offices. We, some are called to the prophetic office. Some are called to the kingly office. We are all called. The prophetic office, the prophets, need the support of the kings. And maybe you are called to the business world. Maybe you are called to be part of the marketplace. Maybe you're called to bring Jesus wherever you are. Maybe a call center or it may be you may have a small business or a big business. But God is calling you and the question is, where is he calling you to? So if you think your passion is along that line, maybe God is calling you there right where you are right now. Okay, I will read to you our scripture verse and this has something to do with miracles, okay? We continue to talk about miracles and I want you to extend your hands towards the Word of God and we will honor the Word of God together. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 8 um, from verse 14 to 22. Okay, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 22. And uh, this is about uh, Jesus arriving in the house of Peter. Okay, Matthew 8, verse 14 to 22. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. Yes, Peter had a mother-in-law. <laughs> Peter had a mother-in-law. Our first pope had a mother-in-law. The, 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 the celibacy part came in the 1100s. So, 
So Peter had a mother-in-law. But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. Then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Let's honor the word one more time together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Word of God. It's our strength. It gives you strength. Scripture says that it's medicine to the body. Especially right now, we're waiting for the vaccine. Let the Word of God be our vaccine. Read the Word of God every day. Read the Word of God. Bring the Word of God with you every day. Meditate on the Word of God with you every day. Meditate on it. Ruminate on it. And uh, it will bring health to your body. Not just to your body, but to your spirit as well. Wonderful Word of God. Let me continue. Our one big message for today is simple. Go all in. Go all in. When you answer the, the call, remember this, remember this. Whenever there's a call, there has to be an answer. When someone calls you, you have to respond. And when we respond to God's call, we cannot go half-half. We cannot say, Lord, okay, I'm going to give you half of my life today. No? The, the song doesn't go, Lord, I offer half my life to you. No. You have to go all in. It's either you, you're in or you're not. And, and, and that is the way God wants us to respond. Jesus said that, that he doesn't like lukewarm people. And the lukewarm people, are they are neither hot nor cold. But you have to go all in. When you say you believe, you have to believe. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, uh, um, I'm not, you, you know, you, you won't make mistakes anymore. But whatever it is, whether you make mistakes or not, when, you're, when it comes to answering God's call, go all in. Let me tell you about God's call in my life. I remember attending my first prayer meeting at 12 years old. And then I, uh, at around 14 years old, someone came to our house and prayed over us. Prayed over us. Before she prayed over me, I remember her name, Sister Ruth. Sister Ruth, if you're listening, you are the reason why I'm here. It's your fault. Before she prayed over me, she said, you're going to be a preacher. That was 14. I, when I was 14, and that was God's call. And I've, I've, I've answered God's call every single day of my life. Every single day of my life. At one point, I said a prayer that I learned from our, our uh, elder at that time, the guy who's leading us, the brother who's leading us in our community at that time. I, I learned a prayer and I made that same prayer. I said that same prayer, Lord, there's nothing that you will ask of me that I will not give you. And uh, until now, I answer God's call every day. When I wake up in the morning, I say, Lord, I am here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. I say again, yes. All in. All in. You have to be all in. You have to believe. And when you believe, you, you, have, to, you, you have to go all in. You, you itataya mo lahat. Let me tell you a story about someone who was crazy, went to Niagara Falls, and uh, he installed a, a, a tight rope. And uh, this guy is good. This guy is good. So, so he tried to cross 
Niagara Falls and there were people watching it, it, it's similar to what David Blaine's doing you know um, and, and he was in Niagara Falls and, and uh, the guy on the public address system says okay who among you who among you believe who believes that he can cross the Niagara Falls and, and this guy's good huh? so everyone raised their hands woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, I believe I believe I believe he can do that and then the, the guy on the PA system said, okay, since all of you believe, you know, this guy is looking for a volunteer. He's looking for a volunteer who will ride his back when he crosses. Now, who believes he can cross? Suddenly, <laughs> one by one, one by one, the hands went down. They believed, but they did not really believe. Okay? They believed that they but they were not willing to go all in. They were not willing to, to, to risk it because they believed. My message, brothers and sisters, when you answer God's call, you go all in. There are two parts of this of this the, the scripture passage that we read. I read to you today. Two parts. And the first part is this. Um, in Matthew 8, 14. Okay. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with high fever, okay? But when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. When Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. And, and I, I, I'd like to point out what happened after that. It could have ended there. It could have ended there that, that the, the mother-in-law of Peter had COVID-19. But Jesus came. She had fever. Jesus came, touched her. And she became well. It could have ended there. But I, I, I want to point out, and I, this is where I want to bring this, 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 uh, th this talk. Okay? This is, um, this is where I want to bring it. Um, the, the next lines in verse 15, it says, Then she got up and prepared a meal from, for him. In another translation, um, it, it reads, She rose and began to serve him. She rose and began to to serve him brothers and sisters the mother-in-law of Peter was sick and when she received God's healing she served after I know a lot of people who ask for prayers for whatever miracles that they're asking for they're asking for prayers for healing for provision and when they're asking for prayers they're all in but when the answers came Sadly, slowly, they walked away. Listen, brothers and sisters, I said earlier that everyone is called. God is calling you. And you answer His call. And when you do, you serve Him forever. We should not stop from receive, at the point where we receive the miracle. We should not stop there because we need to continue. After the miracle has come, after we received our miracle, let's be like Peter's mother-in-law. You know, she doesn't have a name. They didn't even say her name. But let's be like her. That when Jesus touched her, when Jesus healed her, huh? she continued to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. And she began to continue to serve them. Imagine, imagine. Um, I, I remember... Um, I remember when we were starting the charismatic renewal, there's this house in, in Magallanes where we had our prayer meetings. And that was some sort of, uh, you know, a, a, a place that where we go to. But the house of the elder, elders at that time, there, uh, it was in, in Scienceville. And I remember that. That was some, some sort of a headquarters for us. When we would receive special teachings, we would go there. And when we would do practices for music ministry, um, yes, I was part of the music ministry, and we practiced every week. We would be there, and uh, it was like it was like uh, you know the, we we went there, and uh, we can eat there when you're hungry. You can eat there. They fed us there. They we practiced. They fed us there, and it was a center. Okay, it was like a center, and uh, the house of Peter was like that. And imagine the shock of the apostles, the disciples, when okay when they went there. Peter's mother-in-law was sick, so that meant that there was no food. Imagine, 
you know, serving God is, is, is really fun. But, you know, but, but I, 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 I find the eating as fun. <laughs> and uh, imagine they're shocked when the mother-in-law um, was sick and then Jesus and Jesus healed her and as soon as and this is just my imagine this is my just my you know imagination okay I'm just imagining that maybe when Jesus touched her she got okay and she felt but she felt good she immediately got up and prepared food for him for Jesus and for them um, yeah her response should be our response when Jesus heals us when Jesus when we receive our miracle and even if we don't Let's continue to serve Him. Let's continue to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Brothers, don't waste a blessing. Don't waste a blessing. I think that in this world, blessings come for a reason. Trials come for a reason and blessings come for a reason as well. And I think every blessing is a call to serve the blesser. When we have grateful hearts, when we are grateful to God for blessing us and giving us grace, something that we don't deserve, it's always a call to serve the blesser. Are you being blessed right now? Are you being blessed right now? If you're being blessed right now and if you can experience and feel God's blessings all over, I want to challenge you. Are you serving God already? We have feasts all over. And here in Makati, we have feasts. Serve. Don't forget the blessing and not serve. Continue to serve. Or if you haven't started, start to serve. Begin to serve. And uh, I'm telling you, this will be the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. Yeah. yeah. Serve God now. When I was, uh, you know, um, new with the Light of Jesus family, um, one day I got this, uh, this uh, a little booklet, Novena to God's Love. And that's where we write our dreams, okay? And uh, if you're an attendee of the, the, the feasts anywhere, you know that this is what we give those who are attending for the first time. So there's a Novena to God's Love. And we wrote down our dreams and our dreams are there and uh, you know eventually I, I realized that yes my dreams are come becoming true are, are, are coming to pass and um, I, 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 I started to pray Lord Lord fulfill my dreams Lord um, Lord please give me everything give me the divine connection the divine appointment uh, show me to the right people at the right time so that I'll be able to to realize this dream but, but you know what, as, as, as God continues to bless me, as God continues to show mercy, as God continues to work on me, my prayer has changed. Now, instead of wanting God to fulfill my dreams, I also want to fulfill His dreams. God has a call in your life, and God has a dream for you. God doesn't see you as you are right now, but God sees you as a finished product. Now, instead of us wanting God to fulfill our dreams, we will get to that point when we will also want to fulfill God's dreams. Yes, to fulfill God's dreams for you. For he said in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know well the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare, not for woe, plans to give you a future, full of hope that is God's dream for you that is his plan for you and would it be nice wouldn't it be nice for us to help fulfill God's dream for our lives amen brothers and sisters I pass you over now to brother Eb Magtuba brother Eb will continue this talk and I'm sure you can be blessed listen in lean in to God's word Brother Ab. Thank you, Brother Randy, for that powerful message and very inspiring. Before we begin, let me share with you something about healing. Something funny. <laughs> May magkaibigan ang pangalan nila Ray at saka Ronnie. And si Ray, mahina ang pandinig. So pagkatapos 
nang ma-realize na mahinang pandinig niya, pumunta siya sa doktor, nagpa-check up and Ray said, pare, galing ako, galing ako sa doktor, nakabili ako ng hearing aid. Grabe pre, ang lakas na ng pandinig ko. Sabi ni Ronnie, talaga? At magkano naman yung bili mo sa hearing aid? Sabi ni Ray, kahapon lang. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah. Medyo corny, di ba? But anyway, let's continue after, let's continue our talk. After praying, Lord, make your dreams come true through me. Di ba? Yun yung last part sa message ni Brother Randy. Let's move on. Let's move on. After Jesus was healed by Mama B, <laughs> Mama B, Jesus conducted a night prayer rally in Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 to 17. Tingnan natin. Let's Look at that one, verses 16 to 17. And let's read Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 to 17. That evening, let's read. That evening, many demon, demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command. And he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. I believe God has not changed. The same Jesus who healed 2,000 years ago is the still the same Jesus who heals you today. We get excited when, when, when we witness a healing. Diba? We love it when, when God answers our prayers. Yes? This is a great place to start with your spiritual journey. After all, suffering is God's megaphone to catch your attention. And that's why for many people, God is like SM. Why? He's got it all for you. <laughs> Need something? Go to God. But this is just a start. Can you say that word? Start. It's just a start. You can't stop there. Imagine a, a runner of a, a marathon who crosses the starting line. Nag-cross sa starting line and all of a sudden starts jumping up and down, up and down and shouting, I won! I won! Di ba weird? The guy beside him probably would say, what do you mean you, you won? You just started. You, you're not in the finish line. You're only in the starting line. What does the finish line look like? Ano itsura ng picture niya? Matthew described it with two guys who wanted to follow Jesus. Look at, well, look at what happened after the healing rally in verse 19. Chapter 8, verse 19. Let's, let's read. Verse 19 says, Ang sinabing, Then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, said to Jesus, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you wherever you go. This guy, this guy was a religious professional. So think of someone like a priest or a pastor or a preacher today. Parang ganyan. The guy was saying, I want in Jesus. I want to be your disciple. Seeing the huge crowds in the healing rally of Jesus, everything looked glamorous. Ganda? Very attractive. Perhaps this religious professionals was wondering, hey, Baka sumali, kung sumali ako kay Jesus, I can perform miracles and heal the sick as well and attract this kind of crowd, this huge crowd, or bigger than this. Jesus had to paint the brutal picture. Ano yun? Ano yun? Discipleship question number one. Can you let go of attachments to material things? Can you let go? He said in verse 20. Ano sinabi niya sa verse 20? Let's read that. But Jesus replied. Let's read. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay His head. Notice that Jesus did not say, Congratulations! You will not regret this. You will not regret your decision. You will have an enormous fun and excitement. Here are my disciples' benefits. You won't get hungry. 
because you can you can multiply we can multiply bread here there's unlimited supply of alcoholic beverages because i can transform water into wine and you're covered with with health insurance ma that money could not even buy why because hello i'm the great healer <laughs> diba? instead of the benefits and then ginawa ni jesus jesus talk about the burdens the burdens and then sinabi niya are you sure you want to follow me if you think following me is about excitement of healing and the, the, the fun of miracles i've got news for you i've got news for you it's going to be rough it's going to be hard it's going to be tough i don't belong anywhere in the world and if you follow me you won't belong too in this world you see this huge crowd following us one day some of them will shout crucify him crucify him if you want to follow jesus you won't feel at home anywhere in the world yes why because god is your only home would you be disciple number two the second guy in verse verses 21 and 22 so let's read verses 21 to 22 chapter 8 matthew another of his disciples said lord first let me return home and bury my father but jesus told him follow me now let the spiritually dead bury their own dead the first time I read this verse, sabi ko, grabe naman, ang rude naman ni Jesus. Di ba? Patay yung tatay. Dapat ang sasabihin ko, dapat may condolences po. Of course, of course, ilibing niyo po muna yung tatay niyo. But upon studying more about more about of this, I learned that this guy was using an idiom. That the father of this guy was alive and well and he, wa he is not sick at all. He was saying, Jesus, my father still needs me at home and I can't leave. But when, we, when, when we, he finally dies, which is probably 10 to 20 years from now, I will follow you, Jesus. But even if this was the case, someone might say, but bro, don't you, don't you always say, diba, love your family, diba? your first ministry is your family. How could Jesus tell him? to leave his parents. Remember, Jesus was a Jewish teacher. And all, almost all, almost all ancient Jewish teachers will always have a special tool in their toolbox, in their preaching toolbox called hyperbole. What is that? Jesus exaggerates to emphasize a point. That's what he uses. That's a tool. Jesus was not being anti-family. Jesus loves family. You can read here in this whole script, in this whole Bible. Jesus loves family. Jesus read the entire, just read the entire Bible and you will know. So, ano ibig sabi, ano bang sinasabi ni Jesus dito talaga? Discipleship question number two. That leads us to this. Can you let go of your attachment to persons? Yan. Kanina, things. Ngayon, persons. I want, to, I want you to look back at your life and yourself as an attachment to a person prevented you from following God, from following Jesus. I've seen marami, tragic stories of good people al allowed the wrong set of friends to pull them away from God. Hmm. Because their identity is wrapped by the opinions of their barricada. And I've met some who have grieved too long for their loved ones, some breakups, and they made this one person the center of their life, not Jesus. Masyadong matagal yung grieving. There's a healthy duration. And as a student of the subject of leadership, I'm a student of subject of leadership, I always admire and follow leaders, both in ministry life, in ministry life, in, in business life, in my family life as well. But some have failed me along the way. Perhaps in their absence, perhaps in their failures, or perhaps in their incompetence in, uh, in, in some areas. 
But as I continue to develop as a leader, I realize that I need to say yes to, to a failure-free and a perfect leader. And good news! I found him! He has a name and his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And bottom line, this is what this means. When you say yes to one, you're saying no to many. Yes! Let God be your only real attachment. Following Jesus is serious business. Alam mo ba yan? It's radical. It's radical as marriage. Seven years ago, I stood in front of the altar waiting for the most beautiful woman in the place, in the planet, in my eyes, to walk down in the aisle. Okay? And with my, with my voice breaking, sabi ko, this is it. This is it. This is it. Ganyan. And on that day, before God, I said yes to her and very good, right? Yes, of course. But with the same breath, I also said no to three billion women on this planet. And this is what it means to put God first. The same lang, when you follow Jesus, you're saying yes to God and saying no to all kinds of attachments, both things and persons. That in your heart, maybe more important to God, you need to let them go. Let them go. I remember, at the, remember the tightrope story kanina? Sa start ng talk natin, where Brother Randy mentioned, when someone, when, when a person try, when that artist trying to cross from this end to the other end, the Niagara Falls, and remember how, how no one wanted to volunteer, di ba? This was actually one, there's one, there's actually one who did volunteer. And it was an eight-year-old girl who raised her hand. Ako po, gumanon. And very quickly, they, they, they brought her to the tightrope artist and lifting her up on his shoulders. And the acrobat walked on the steel cable and crossed the Niagara Falls. Yeah, okay. Everyone is holding their breath. And get this, the entire time, this brave young girl was smiling in the whole time after this after they arrived and on the other side the MC ran to interview the girl and he asked I have so many questions little girls a little girl I have so many questions little girl why did you volunteer hindi ka ba natakot weren't you afraid and she beamed from ear to ear pointing to the tightrope artist and said he's my dad I repeat it's easy to say I believe in God and God is amazing and praise the Lord but eto listen to this but will you walk on the tightrope with Jesus will you go all in will you go all in my encouragement to you, my friend, today, trust Him. Go all in. Itodo mo na. Itodo mo na. Go all in. Type, if you make that decision, type in the chat box, go all in. Go all in. Go all in. Let's continue to worship God today. Let's continue to worship Jesus today. We thank you, God, that even with our imperfections and sins, you have called us to follow you. It's never easy, Lord, but by your grace and love, we would be able to do so. You alone satisfies, and with you, O oh God, we will never run out of everything we need. We just ask, Father, that you give us the grace to endure every trial and serve you with joy in our hearts as we sing together. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now that 
in your best way and perfect time, our dreams will come true. In Jesus' name, amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. My friend, thank you for being with us today. I'm grateful and happy and I'm looking forward for our experience next week. And don't forget, if you're a first-timer, we have a special gift for you. Okay, just type first-timers in the comment box and someone will connect to you. And today, um, if you need someone, a safe group to journey with you, especially in these difficult times, we have a small group who can journey with you, just type small group in the comment box as well and someone will connect to you then. You know? So we're ready to serve you here. Today, I pray that as we end this service, this live stream, I pray that God will embrace you and for this whole week, He will bless you with a special protection and with a special provision. And I can't wait to be with you next week. See you. God bless you. Bye-bye.